At the end of the previous book, everyone learned Norman's mother is dating Earl Flensburg, whoever that is. This book starts with Carrie and Earl getting married. Take note, Hannah. You can date someone without stringing them along for four years. Argofonk book review, Argofonk book review. Now that Carrie's married, Mother is the most eligible bachelorette in Lake Eden. She has a different date every night this week. Personally, I would never date Hannah's mother, because there's a 30% chance that whoever she dates will be murdered. Hannah makes recipes 1 and 2, which are cracker-based cookies. They have crack in the title, so both Mike and Michelle assume Hannah's using drugs as an ingredient. That would explain why her cookies are so popular. Hannah's offended, not so much at the idea that she's breaking the law, but more at the fact that crack is a slang term, and slang terms are bad grammar. This book's victim is Professor Bradford Ramsey, According to Book 1, Bradford was an assistant professor at Hannah's college. She fell in love with him, and, quote, Hannah had discovered that sex was a lot more fun than she thought it would be, end quote. When she discovered Bradford had a fiancé, Hannah was so upset she quit school, went back home to start a bakery, and has never been able to commit to a relationship since. This book changes Hannah's backstory with Bradford, you can read it as a totally chaste relationship which never went past kissing. Bradford is now a terrible scoundrel who uses poetry to seduce every woman he sees. Hannah wants to warn her sister Michelle about Bradford, but that would involve admitting she made a mistake, so Hannah says nothing. She'd rather let her sister have an affair with a married man than feel uncomfortable for half a minute. The mayor's wife, Stephanie, enters Hannah's store. Stephanie is wearing fancy clothes, so everyone assumes her husband's been cheating on her again. I have to say, the mayor constantly cheating on his wife is my least favorite running joke of the entire series. It's not funny at all. It's actually really tragic. Stephanie is holding a three-day charity gala this week, which includes a talent show, she asks Hannah to make her 1,200 sugar cookies for free. Uh, the luncheon is in two days. Sorry, Stephanie, but you can't order food for hundreds of people a mere two days in advance. Lisa suggests making apple turnovers instead. I don't know why she suggests this. She's never made apple turnovers before. Why would she commit to making hundreds of them? The good news is that Lisa suckers her in-laws into doing all the baking, so the apple turnover sale generates huge profits for Hannah's store. Andrea shows up in tears. Her husband Bill has been offered a job in Florida. She doesn't want to move to Florida! Andrea comes crying to Hannah about the job offer every day this week. It's not the first time Andrea's had major drama which would be easily resolved if she bothered to talk to her husband for 10 seconds. I'm actually a little worried about their relationship. In the mandatory cat subplot, Hannah watches Norman's cat while he's gone visiting friends. When Norman comes back, he acts strangely. Mike also acts weird. He kisses Hannah passionately and says, He's just gonna break her heart. She should marry Norman instead. Hannah gets mad at Mike for pawning her off on Norman. She can't decide if this is an excuse to dump her, or some kind of reverse psychology trick. Andrea has another crying fit over her husband. Also, she needs a homemade snack for Tracy's school field trip. And why, pray tell, does it have to be homemade? Just get the kid a granola bar from the grocery store or something. Hannah goes to Andrea's house, where Tracy still talks like a teenager, even though she's supposed to be seven or something. Tracy spends five pages helping Hannah cook recipe number six. Twice, Herb visits the store and teaches Hannah the secret whistle to summon a police dog. It might be important later on. Herb is doing his magic act for the talent show. He wants Hannah to be his assistant, like she did in Key Lime Pie Murder. Hannah hated doing that show, because she was forced to wear this ugly purple dress. Everybody eats recipe number eight, while Hannah tries on various dresses. 
Oh no! The ugly purple dress is the only one that fits her! Wait, what happened to the fancy dress that Hannah had two books ago? Did she get rid of it or something? Also in the talent show are orphan twins Perry and Sherry Connors. Perry is angry and bitter about the orphanage. Poor Sherry is sick, and she constantly throws up. She says it's just food poisoning. When Hannah learns they don't have health insurance, she pays for Sherry to go to the doctor. At the talent show, Bradford grabs Hannah backstage and makes crude references. He threatens to go after Michelle if Hannah doesn't treat him like she used to. Hannah threatens to kill Bradford, and he is murdered not long afterwards. Hannah and Michelle make recipes 8 and 9. Michelle reveals she had a relationship with Bradford. Again, the book uses generic terms, so you can read it as a relationship that didn't go past kissing. It's still really gross and unnecessary that Bradford dated both sisters. Not to mention, it completely contradicts his threat to seduce Michelle. He's already seduced her, so why did he threaten to do so? I wish the entire Bradford-Michelle relationship had not been part of this book. If it has to be in here, then change the timeline. So Bradford was just starting to flirt with Michelle. She can be happy to have dodged that bullet when Hannah tells her the truth about Bradford. I would like that story way better than what we got, which is Bradford slept with Michelle and Hannah and, and, oh, oh, uh, okay. Back to the book. Hannah makes recipe number 10 and Norman picks up his cat. Hannah gets mad at Norman because he had dessert with dinner tonight. Why didn't he save room for dessert at Hannah's? Didn't he know she was going to make three different recipes? Mike tells Hannah the murder was a crime of passion, as Bradford was stabbed multiple times. When he learns Hannah had an affair with Bradford, Mike is indignant on Hannah's behalf. That is out of character for Mike. I would expect him to be super jealous that Hannah has slept with someone else. The suspect list includes Stephanie and Bradford's ex-wives. There's his research assistant. Bradford cheated him out of a job in order to seduce a woman. Finally, Bradford flunked his student because he was seducing the student's girlfriend. This is like the sixth student that Bradford has seduced. Why hasn't anyone reported him to the school board? Apparently, he does nothing in his classes but flirt with the cute females. Michelle makes recipe 17, which is two easy hot dish. <laughs> it's so easy, you can throw it together with items you already have in your refrigerator. I checked. My fridge only has one of the four ingredients. Hannah and I must have vastly different grocery shopping lists. Andrea freaks out over her husband's job again. Hannah realizes this is a scam. Someone impersonated a company to give Bill a fake job offer. Who did this and why? We never find out. What a waste of a storyline. All the suspects are cleared and Hannah realizes Sherry's not sick. She's pregnant. Sherry loves the father, but she can't marry him for secret reasons. Hannah's a little slow on the uptake here, so she doesn't realize Bradford is the father of the baby. Sherry's brother Perry killed Bradford once he found out. Perry locks Hannah inside a tomb, but she escapes by doing the special police dog call. We finish with Norman revealing he's been acting weird because his new business partner is an attractive woman named Beverly. I'm sure she'll be murdered in an upcoming book. The end. Post-book follow-up. I like this book, but it's definitely a weak entry in the series. I believe it's the first book that's under 300 pages, so it's shorter than normal. I didn't like the fake job offer mystery because it was unresolved and it was 90% Andrea freaking out over nothing. I also didn't like the mystery of Norman's weird behavior, which was too similar to the previous book, which had a subplot about Norman's mom acting weird. The subplot about Bradford seducing women was just plain creepy and gross. The last subplot about the charity gala was actually pretty good. I'd say that was the best of the bunch. Many readers, including myself, solved the main mystery before the murder even occurred. The twins are the only new characters in the book, which makes them the culprit by default. 
All the other suspects never appear, so you know they're innocent. Hannah only clears one suspect, Stephanie. The book would be instantly improved if Hannah cleared all the suspects herself, instead of letting her friends do the work. And like I've said before, the book would be better if the victim was killed at the start, not over the halfway through. Hannah goes back into grammar police mode in this book. She corrects her family members for saying, Can I? instead of May I? For saying bad instead of badly, and for saying crocodile instead of alligator. She also criticizes herself for thinking a key is under lock and key. Hannah actually gets into a fight with herself a few times in this book, it's weird. Even though Mike told Hannah to marry Norman, the love triangle didn't change at all in this book. I did like how Hannah acknowledged the fact that she shouldn't criticize Mike for dating other women when she's cheating on him with Norman. Is this the first time Hannah admitted she's a hypocrite for dating two men and expecting both of them to be monogamous? Overall, I thought it was a bad mystery, but so help me, I like the book. I don't know why, I just gave you many reasons to dislike the book, but I still enjoy it! I want to read the next one, I am not one of the people who quit the series here because the love triangle's terrible, and the author is clearly more interested in baking than mysteries. I give Hannah Swenson number 13, Apple Turnover Murder, a 6 out of 10.